Hello, this is a video about the Quebec 1 bit 1 instruction transistor CPU, which you can see right here. Some people asked for a video, and uh, so this is it. There's also a website about this project, uh, which gives a lot of design information, uh, but not so much how to use it. So this video is intended to be the opposite. It shows you how to use it, and uh, which module is which, and how, what it looks like, and so on. So, um, yeah, let's take a look. <coughs> so this is everything. This is a uh, complete CPU in this box. It consists of a, like a backplane, baseboard. That is uh, the big PCB that you see in the, at the bottom, about 20 by 20 centimeters. That is a dumb PCB. It only is, uh, you know, it's only an interconnect PCB between the plug-in modules that you see around here. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and so forth. 13 plug-in modules. Most of the modules um, implement uh, like the digital logic of the CPU, except two boards uh, are not part of the CPU, have a different function. That is this one at the front, this one here. That is a combined, um, a little bit of it is, uh, what is it, uh, a latch, a very simple latch. I have uh, paint on my fingers. And um, a 16 by 16 LED display. That's not part of the CPU. The CPU cannot access this LED display. The host PC can access this LED display. So, and the other board that's not uh, part of the CPU is this one, right there. That is an interface board, and it sits between the um, address and data bus of the CPU and the PC, the host PC. So, the CPU, well, actually, what it, how it hap how it works is that the host PC emulates a RAM and ROM. So the host PC serves as a serial RAM and ROM. And this card here um, yeah, communicates between the CPU's address and data bus and the host PC. Right. <coughs> so, um, if you go to the website, I'll show a few pictures and talk about that a little bit because it's it may be useful to know a little bit about uh, how this thing works to understand the programs that you will write later on. So, okay, okay, and this picture is maybe interesting. So, this is a one instruction CPU, that means there's only one instruction, and what that instruction does is uh, shown here in this box, in this uh, picture. So, there is one data channel like a data bus um, yeah what the instruction does every cycle is invert whatever is at the data bus okay so one becomes zero zero becomes one it's just one bit because it's a one bit cpu the data bus is one bit wide after this inversion if the data bit is one yes then um, simply continue with the next uh, instruction in program memory and do the same thing again. So see whatever is at the data bus, invert it. If it's one, go to the next instruction, and so on and so on. If the data bit is zero after inversion, then take an optional branch address. So what this does is invert the data bit and branch if it is zero. So IBC, that's basically the I, yeah, abbreviation of the only instruction, so that's why the name is QIBEC because there are three letters I, B, and C, yeah, contained in a name. So it's not a very good name, but it works. So um, that's that. <coughs> okay, I'm not gonna talk about uh, the inner workings of the CPU because I think the website is sufficient for that. If you have questions about that, of course, mail. The contact information is shown on the website. Now, the a total system, what you see in this box, is only a CPU. And to make uh, use of that, it should be combined with a RAM and a ROM at least to have uh, to store a program in ROM and to work on some data in RAM, to have some temporary data. So a complete system, <coughs> a suggested system is shown here. CPU is there, that's what in, what's in the box. 
uh, it can use a ROM and it can use a RAM. So, yeah, in practice, it, this would be one chip, for example, one uh, computer chip, one, one processor. This would be one chip, a ROM chip. This would be one chip, a RAM chip. Now, instead of a chip, this one is uh, this thing is whatever is in the box, right? There is no ROM inside the box, and there is no ROM anywhere. There is no RAM inside the box or anywhere. Instead, the PC acts like a ROM and acts like a RAM. And um, from the CPU's point of view, it seems like it is talking to an actual ROM and an actual RAM. But uh, the interface card that we showed earlier, that we looked at earlier, um, makes yeah, translates between uh, address and data bus on the CPU side and USB on the PC side. So that takes care of that. Instead of having to use an actual ROM or RAM because that's not very uh, convenient in this case. So, <coughs> yeah, let's take a quick look at the subsystems inside the CPU. Not in detail, but just to make a link with the um, plugin module, so to see which plug plugin module does what. Now, this is a CPU. This uh, are not the PC and branch and data are like channels, data channels. The, there's a program counter, there's a branch input, and there's a data bit. It's not important now. This is a latch, um, a one bit latch, and uh, that is right there so DIO latch data IO latch that's that thing very small so it didn't make sense to make a separate module just for that so yeah there's a combined module with uh, data latch and um, a display on it <coughs> so another subsystem is a address increment unit, there's a thing with a plus one in it and what it does, uh, actually the text explains what it does, so I'm not going to talk about that and let's see now it looks like this so 8-bit increment that's, uh, uh, let's focus please please right so there's one plug-in module. We need a 16-bit uh, address increment, so we need two of these cards. There are two of these cards in the CPU. Then there's a multiplexer. That's this one. That's a 16-bit multiplexer, so it chooses between two 16-bit values. Now what I did was make a plug-in module um, here with a make a 5-bit multiplexer as a plug-in module, which was not very smart. It should have been a 4-bit one, because to make 16 bits, I would need 4 4-bit four multiplexers with zero, 0 bits to spare, or 4 of these as well, and you have uh, 4 bits to spare, so it doesn't make sense. You just throw away 4 bits. A little solder mask joke there. <coughs> so the CPU has 4 of these multiplexer cards. Next one is an address latch. That's a block with an L in it. And this thing would focus, that would be nice. Okay, then don't. Yeah, there's a block with an L in it. So we have two of these, 16 bits each. So we need a 32 bit latch in total, 32 latch bits, so to say. Um, to do that, I made a 8-bit latch module, so we, we need four of these, right? Yeah, all the modules look more or less the same. It's resistors and transistors. The small black things are transistors. A BC, uh, what is it? 840, uh, 847, yeah. And uh, a few resistors. So the CPU has four of these cards, and that's basically it. <coughs> Um, yeah. So let's talk about the display a little bit because um, yeah, I said at the start the CPU cannot um, 
access this display itself. So, for example, this card here cannot access this display itself. Uh, the host PC is the only one who can do that. So, what's the use of this? Um, how it works is like this: the CPU has a 64k address range for RAM, so for data address range, a 64k range. Now, almost all of that 64k is actual RAM, except 16 times 16 bits, so 250, 200. <laughs> 56 bits um, are not RAM but are display so the host takes care of when the CPU writes to a certain address range so from 8000 hex to 80ff hex whenever it writes there the um, host knows hey this is not RAM but you mean to write to this you want to write to the display so what it does is whenever it sees a write access to for example address uh, 80 hex it updates a bit on this a pixel on the display so that's how it works it's basically memory map display yeah <coughs> okay so that was that so that's the, the hardware basically now um, this thing was the CPU was demonstrated at the Maker Firm Berlin in 2016 in October, and um, I used the PC application for that. That looked like this, hopefully, something like that. <coughs> so that's a Tickle TK PC application, and it does a few things. It's very dark. Uh, doesn't matter. So it does a few things. Um, instead of a hardware display that we just saw the LED display, 16 by 16 LEDs, it has the same pixels here. So whenever a write access is done at the address range at A000 hex, this low this PC screen is updated. And the actual hardware display is updated. So it does that. Plus you can choose by means of buttons between a few programs. I made a few example programs, it's nice to see. And what it's doing right now is a, a very simple program. Yeah, we can run it again. Yep, paint a smiley on the on the display and invert all the bits all the time. And that's all it does. There's no branches, there's no no uh, variables, no conditions, no conditionals. So it is a very simple program. <clears throat> just to see if everything works. You can also adjust uh, the speed of execution uh, using this slider. I'm not sure if that's very visible, but you can uh, drag it to the right to make it go slower and slower and slower. So you can see very well where it's writing and where it's reading and what it's doing now. That's just nice to, uh, yeah, to get an idea of what, yeah, how it executes a program, literally. So. Let's put it at normal speed again. <coughs> um, yeah. W what happens when you press a one of these buttons, for example, programs, is that uh, the CPU is restarted, so it is reset, and um, a new ROM image is used, so a new program image is used. Uh, this one is a game. This one is a, like a cellular automaton. This uh, bottom one is what you see here, simple patterns. So that's that's like an executable file, it's a binary file. But to make that binary file, you program in an assembly language. The, the each microprocessor has an, like a native uh, instruction set, like a native language. And in order to let it do certain things, you have to program in that language. You have to tell it what to do in that language. It's assembly language. And that's how this is made. So the process is the programmer makes a program in assembly, for example. Then it goes through a translation phase, like the program to do that is called the assembler. And out comes a binary file. And the binary file is eventually what's executed by the CPU. Right? <coughs> so uh, what we're gonna do now is make a very simple assembly program. Can stop that 
that the program is called tk.tcl doesn't matter we can make a simple assembly program now and again how the yeah specifics about the um, instruction set and uh, how the assembler work are on the website so I'm not going to repeat that what would be nice is if this thing focus a little bit yeah let's do it like this see what happens I right, hope you can read that a little bit okay now this is a very simple program the, the only native instruction that this CPU has because it's a one whoops sorry because it's a one instruction CPU is uh, IBC Stay focused. The only native instruction is IBC. So all you can tell it is to execute this native instruction with different parameters. So um, how this works is written on the website, but in short, we have a program, main until end. Um, okay, okay, we have one variable here. Uh, the start of the, the address of the display 8000 hex is the upper left corner of the display so whenever you write to that address you write to the upper left pixel on the display now what this program does is f basically flip the bit at the upper left corner of the display so if it is zero after flip go back to start if it is not zero after flipping it go here and um, flip it again if it is zero after that second flip, then go back to start, else go here, except it never reaches there. <coughs> because when you flip it twice, it's always zero. So it will always go back to start. So what this does basically is toggle a bit on the display forever. And we can see that. Okay. Uh, Or hijack the binary program that that pattern simple pattern program what you saw just now so uh, whenever we start the uh, PC application again you'll see what happens instead of the this bit at the upper left corner of the screen the pixel is inverted now it's not easy to see because it's pretty fast if you can if you uh, lower the clock rate lower 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 using the slider at the bottom you see it inverted right <coughs> also also this is the same as on the local display right exactly the same yeah. so at the bottom of the, the screen you can see what actually happens the ROM address so the program address is alternately uh, 0 or 1 that's our two instructions that we just had the RAM address is constantly uh, is always 8000 because we're always writing and reading to this bit right here right <coughs> now um, 8000 is the upper left corner we can also use 8088 that is 8 pixels to the right and 8 to the bottom so that should be somewhere around the middle and uh, assemble it again so we get a new binary and uh, run the PC program again and now it toggles a bit at the center of the screen okay if we make it a little bit slow you can see that it actually toggles right and the same on the local display but I'm not going to show that so and fast again <coughs> Uh, it would be pretty boring to make uh, only, well actually maybe this is pretty boring, I don't know, but it would be nice to have some way of input, because now you only have output, so uh, to get input from, from the external, yeah, from, from the world, from the user. So to do that, um, yeah, to do that, <coughs> and look at this interface card, at the back, so apart from uh, connecting the CPU's address and data bus through the USB cable right here um, to the host PC, this is the power input. But it also has um, 
like a game controller input. This is meant for to play a game. You can uh, have one input and one output signal. This is well, it doesn't matter, but it has one one button. You can connect a button to this and uh, have it uh, have the CPU read that button. This is for player two. So you basically have two inputs. Okay. Now I can <coughs> uh, during the during the Maker Faire demonstration, I used this. This is a kitchen timer. I'm not going to open it up, but this is um, to play a game. You could press the, the, the beak of the chicken and then connect this one to the CPU so you can play a game. Very simple game with one button, fire button. Eventually, I want to use something like this. So, this is um, made from acrylic. Right, two sheets of acrylic, uh, small PCB with buttons on it. So you can solder a cable to it, buttons and uh, diodes or resistors. You can put this in there. Hopefully, no. Nice overlay. Ah, you have a game controller. Very simple, very cheap. So left, right, up, down, and uh, fire. So you have a little bit more inputs than uh, just fire. So that's th that's what it should look like. Look like two of these. But for now, I'm going to use this. This is um, the same connector that you saw just now at the end of the cable, except at the end of the cable now is nothing, just two wires. So it's a very cheap button. I'm going to stick that in here. That's player one input. There we go. <coughs> so, still running the program. What we can do now is uh, let the program use that button. So actually it wasn't running but it's not a big deal. So there we go again. Um, display address is somewhere near 8000. The button also has an address so if you read from address F000 hex you're reading effectively reading the button state. So um, address of button right so this is very basic assembly it's not very interesting this is uh, if you make a long program using only IBC it would look very uh, very oops very boring and not very interesting to read so right so instead of that we do something else out of the IBC instruction right here you can make more interesting instructions like move and add and not and branch and, uh, and whatever. So I did that in the file one bit.asm, one bit.assembly. For example, um, yeah, you can. Um, well, let, let's just make a program and then see how it uh, how it works. So you have a start again. Move this. Let's do this. Um, branch if clear button uh, start. So what this says, what this means is, if the button is not pressed, go back to start. So basically, this waits until the button is pressed, right? Now flip the bit at the display. back to start. So what this means is a branch a branch to start if the bit at button is clear after inversion. I uh, know it's if is clear, right? Then invert uh, the bit at display so that is uh, 800 8088 the upper left corner of this now the middle of display and then branch to start. So if the button is not pressed Go back to start, do nothing. If the button is pressed, then invert the middle pixel on the display and go back to start. If the button is still pressed, invert it again and go back to start, etc. etc. So um, here's the program again. These instructions are not supported by the CPU itself. However, um, 
for example bc1 branch if clear if you look at this file you can see how it is implemented so this yeah this new instruction virtual instruction makes use of ibc plus another instruction which uh, looks like that so you can read this on the website and you can also uh, look at the source code this uh, pretty obvious so we can assemble it again run the program again now you see nothing that's correct because the button is not pressed however if you press the button or hold the wires together you see the bit uh, toggling now right and it keeps toggling as long as the buttons are pressed the button is pressed so that's how it works basically and this is a very simple program so <coughs> oh. instead of this I also made a very simple game that's bit hunt is that one it's like a space invaders game with one invader and uh, the idea is to shoot a bit you have two thirds like in space invader you have one third well you have two now two two players player one player two and you have one invader one bit moving from left to right and you have to shoot it with a third now now I'm, nobody's pressing a fire button so what you see now is uh, all these artifacts uh, above the turret and above the turret and left and right of that bit so what actually happens is if we move it slower you can see what was going on you can see what's going on um, uh, right now it is checking it is reading all the bits in memory in display memory to see if there is a bullet here if there is a bullet if there would be a bullet it would be advanced towards the top and we're checking here if there's a bullet fired then advance it towards the top eventually it will check um, it will scan this horizontal line to see where the bit is and it's doing that right now so now it sees that that bit was one now it moves it one position to the right so that's how it goes and at some point you don't see any movement that's when it uh, scans the um, uh, the game controller so if I press let's see I have to do it in a bit uh, oh, I'll first move it a bit faster because this is really slow so this is normal speed still very slow but okay if I fire now you can see one bullet moving right player one fires now, it would be nice if I had uh, hit the bit but unfortunately no I can try it again so better luck this time maybe yep and player two explodes so player one wins so that's basically how it works. This uh, also makes use of the input device and uh, the screen as output device. And it's a very simple way to show what this thing can do. <coughs> okay. Now. Um, yeah, where to go from here? Because this project is not finished. Uh, yeah, for a number of reasons. One is this timing module. This is a module that uh, controls the timing of the CPU. It, uh, how this works is displayed on the website, I'm not going to do it here. But um, this thing doesn't work properly right now. If you look closely at the CPU, this module is that one right there. And if you look at the back of that module, you see a very small board glued and soldered to it. That is to fix that problem. And that is this board, right? So that's um, a temporary solution. I made this in advance because I thought that would be or there might be problems during uh, for the Maker Fair demonstration, and I wanted to demonstrate something at the Maker Fair. So this board didn't work. So we used that module to uh, to fix the problem, right? Eventually, of course, this has to be removed. This is also the reason why it glows so extremely slow, because now what is um, should be handled in hardware using logic gate is now handled in software, right? And the software is not written well at all. So that's why it goes so slow. That's one thing that needs to be changed. <coughs> Another thing, um, this 
right now is executing the game, right? So this, uh, mo yeah, this interface module is showing what it's doing now. It's showing the address and data bus and the clock signals and the, and the reset signal and whatever. Um, but that doesn't tell a user much, I think. I think what would be useful is if you have LEDs um, that show which pin, for example, of the of this multiplexer module is active now. So on the back plane, if you look at it from the top, um, you could have LEDs on the back plane uh, at the bottom of each module, at the next to each module, showing it, literally showing the user what it's doing. And if you set the clock rate really low, you can actually follow what happens. You can follow a bit through the system and you can see uh, when what happens. That may be useful. So I want to do that. Also, um, this display, 16 by 16 display, I want to make it 8 by 8 because uh, I think this is much too small to be, uh, to be seen from a distance. From close up it's nice, but of maybe nice, but if uh, from a distance is just uh, just too small. Plus the CPU can be smaller than this is a quite expensive CPU or a, a microcontroller to drive it. It can be smaller if it's eight by eight, and then it looks nice with nice big nice big pixels. <coughs> um, this enclosure. This is a temporary enclosure that I use. It's a made of acrylic, sheet of acrylic, as you can see. I glued it together. This, uh, yeah, this is going to change. At the make affair, I had a different enclosure with a backlight in it. I don't think I can. Uh, I cannot show that now, unfortunately. But um, I want to make an enclosure with a with a light source in this one. So if you shine light through that. Uh, through that milled out slots in the PCB, it's pretty nice effect. And also, if you see it from the from the side, it's a nice effect. So I want to do that small PCB inside this uh, in this uh, foot, and then um, it should look nicer. <coughs> PCB with LEDs. Um, okay, oh yeah, interface card. Someone that the maker fair uh, suggested, and I, I think it was a good idea. That it was not obvious that. Um, that this thing was doing the calculation because if you look, if you show this screen and you see a big display on the PC, you think the PC, you might think the PC is doing all the work, but actually this thing is doing all the work. So what I want to do is um, instead of always needing a PC, is making an SD card or a micro SD card slot on this one, uh, so it can run standalone. You can upload. Uh, binary uh, program images and you can choose <coughs> through a menu on the front a simple left right menu and the text can scroll uh, over the pixels and um, you can choose a program image so that, that's nice for demonstration and it makes I think it makes a big impression if you use it standalone it was it was a good idea I think and I want to do that uh, also the connectors here these are very very big connectors so they should be a much smaller. These are modular uh, 5.08 millimeters connectors. They should be much smaller. Everything should be smaller. <coughs> Game controllers. Right now you have uh, only one uh, one input. As you could see, this is it. Instead, I want to have five uh, five buttons, five or six buttons per 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 person. So you can connect two game controllers like an actual game controller, like this thing. It's much nicer. <coughs> and also, the website, if you took a look at the website, it uh, has a lot of design documentation and it's pretty technical, it's pretty pretty, uh, pretty detailed. So I want to make that a bit more accessible. So, uh, yeah, the documentation that's now that's there now should, be, should go under a uh, yeah, technical documentation section or something like that, because it's just not accessible enough now, I think. And um, right now, this you saw the the way programs need to be assembled. Now it's not very easy. It's you have to do it through the command line. You have to know how the assembler works. And if you get error messages, it's a bit uh, difficult to fix. Maybe you have to understand. So um, yeah, something to look at. 
So I want to make a very small IDE um, with an assembler and a no, not a debugger, assembler and a simulator in it. So you can use it offline. You can simulate the CPU on a PC if you must, and um, you can upload flash images. Uh, you can upload binary images to the SD card using USB, and um, you, you can do. Programming, you can design your program and upload your program in one screen with a button and so on, not to command line because I don't think that's very accessible for a lot of people. And uh, also include a few more example programs because there are now three, but I think there are more programs that make sense for this thing to, yeah, to be included in the in the kit, so to say. And um, maybe a bit, yeah a few more videos except uh, I have no idea what the quality of this is and if anyone is still watching or not but um, yeah for some similar projects I saw some videos and they're very uh, very accessible and very easy to watch and I think uh, yeah a video to show how to use something is, uh, is worth a lot of a lot of text can replace a lot of text as well so that was it basically i hope you like it and uh, for any comments or questions you can find contact information on the website qibec.org and it's also listed uh, at the bottom of the page probably okay thanks for watching bye